Good morning guys, this is Derek King, Kingfish on YouTube. Um, I decided to make this video today basically on a African cichlid genus species breakdown. Now, I'll start out by saying this video should help a lot of uh, people new to the hobby as well as people who've been in the hobby for a while because what happens is like I order, I have a tendency to order a lot of fish from a local broker and I can tell you when I first started out in this hobby and you see the scientific names you see the genus and species names on these long lists it, you have no idea in terms of what you're ordering now the toughest part though is that there's a lot of confusion and a lot of misnaming or dual naming of certain cichlids now for the most part um, what I'm gonna go over today is just gonna be a uh, now, I'm going to be somewhat specific, but then again, there's some fish that are actually misnamed. If I make a mistake, just correct it in the comments for me, and that will help all involved. Now, also, with African cichlids, there's a lot of inbreeding. So, there's a lot of fish that aren't properly identified. So, as I go through this, I'm going to do the genus breakdown for a variety, for a variety of fish to help both the newcomer and help with fish identification, which is one of the hardest things in the African cichlid hobby. Now, for the most part, most of my fish are from Lake Malawi. It's a lake in Africa. Um, most of these fish like similar pHs, a pH range of 7.2 to about 8.5, and temperatures between 73 and 82 degrees. I mean, I've had mine as high as 85, sometimes when they get sick and we're medicating them, you might want to go a little bit higher. You don't want to cook your fish, but you do want them to, um, their metabolic rate to increase. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And as I said before, if there's something I leave out or something you disagree with or you have some other idea, please let me know. Put it in the comments section. You'll help us all. One of the most common named peacocks, that, I mean named um, cichlid that you hear is the peacock. Primarily it's the Lunacara species. Now I have several different ones in here, like this strawberry. For the most part, um, the Alunacara species, they're pretty mild, not really that aggressive. I mean, there is a segment of them, the Jacob Freeberti versions, they have a tendency to be a little bit more aggressive, but their body shape is pretty much similar to this. You see that strawberry there? Um, you see that OB right there. OB stands for orange blotch for the people who are new. Basically, it's just a hybrid of fish and they have a tendency to come out in a variety of colors, but that's pretty much their body shape. And so peacocks, for the most part, you know, when you're starting out in the hobby, you'll hear a lot of people say get haps and peacocks. And a lot of things are misnamed as a hap, haplochromis, which is what hap is short for. But a peacock, for the most part, is a pretty good bet because they're not that aggressive, you know, unless it's the Jacob Freebirdy Free version of a um, peacock. But pretty much they have that body shape. Now, as I'm going through this, I, I'll stop real fast. Well, no, they pretty much have that body shape. So I'll show you some of the haps that I actually have here and then over in my 50 gallon, I have more. Like I said, they have a tendency like that, like that um, lemon jake, they have a tendency to have a similar, kind of a rounded body shape. Now, most of you know, my 50 gallon serves as my grow out tank. So the fish over here have a tendency to be a little bit smaller, well, actually a lot smaller than my other fish. All right, the largest genus and the genus that you probably hear most about is Hapalochromus. Hapalochromus species, they swim mid to bottom. They're open water swimmers. They have a tendency to be aggressive and they're dimorphic, meaning that the females and the males look different than each other. So, you know, as it relates to haps, like for example, I'm not certain what type of fish that is, but I think it is some type of hap hybrid. But for example, I have a deep water happen here, which is that fish right there. I have quite a few in here. But let, let me give you an example of a fish that's actually not a hap, but called a hap. Like that fish right there is actually a Venusta. It's pretty common. Uh, pretty common fish. And its nickname is the giraffe hap. It's not really a hap, it's a nimbochromus species, but I'll get to it later. There's quite a few fish that are identified 
in terms of the haplochromous genus that actually are not like like that orange shoulder which actually happens to be right next is the protomelis genus like for example I have a sulfur head in here right here in fact um, they have a tendency to be shaped very similar to the lunacara species but that's a sulfur head right there that actually is a protomelis species they're usually pretty docile for the most part um, unless they're courting um, but they're pretty docile. I mean, they're fish that you can usually have get along with other fish. That's also this fish right here is one of the Alunacara species. Not really sure what type of fish it actually is. If someone does know, they can help me. Now, also, I wanted to stop and explain something, um, even though I went to Cotamelis. In terms of Alunacara females, they have a tendency to be gray or brown or grayish brown, like these examples here. Now that one might possibly be a male because I'm starting to see some color show up on them. But like for example that fish there. But now going back to the protomelis species like that sulfur head right there. Then um, uh, some more examples are like a Taiwan reef, an Andui, a red empress, or an insignis. So for example, like most of you know, there's my red empress right there. I've been having some problems with him before, but he's actually back now. Perfect. You know, that's actually what he's supposed to look like. That in Dewey is also a Potomella species there. Um, like with all African cichlids, their colors largely are dependent upon their dominance and the water conditions. My water conditions are nearly perfect, so that's usually why my colors are pretty good. But for the most part, they can lose color based on dominance. And as a lot of you know, I did a, a pretty in-depth experiment with that fish. That fish was actually gray. And then I put him over here and he dominated and he's a little, um, he colored back up. So again, that's an example of the Protomella species. That is a super red empress. I was going through the Protomella species. I don't think I mentioned the tangerine tiger. That's a beautiful male version of a tangerine. That fish is about seven inches long maybe a little bit bigger he's actually a replacement um, I had a tangerine that was about five inches that that same VC 10 killed so he has a tendency to not like tangerine so he that tangerine is gorgeous as he is he's subdominant in his tank um, so I may end up taking him out and putting him over in the other tank but he has maintained his color this is the nimbachroma species nimbachroma species are carnivores or pescivores meaning they eat fish like for example, like a living stone eye, a venustis, a polystigma, or a fusco. Now I've actually had all of those. Now right now, I'm going to show you an example. That is a juvenile male living stone eye. A lot of you saw my fully grown male living stone eye that I just recently sold because he was too aggressive and killing a lot of fish. That's a female version of it. That fish there is probably about seven inches or so or her male counterpart was a little bit bigger than she was. Now they have a tendency to be very aggressive especially toward other nimbochroma species. Now as I mentioned before that Venustis right there which is wrongly nicknamed the giraffe hap largely is also part of the nimbochroma species. Um, a lot of people specifically will have um, very very aggressive Venustis as they get older. That Venustis actually is a replacement for one that I had before. A friend of mine was getting out of the hobby. He had a nice male Venustis, you know, so I went ahead and tucked him. He's a little bit more than a juvenile. He's probably pushing five inches or so. Pretty fish. I actually like having him, but for the most part, um, the Nemochroma species, the pescivores, they're open swimmers. They have a tendency to be pretty aggressive, so you really want to watch the husbandry as it relates to putting um, male Nimbachroma species together because they will have a tendency to fight. One has a necessity to dominate over the other, especially if you have like a female in there, like I have that one there. This is a fish that I don't actually have in here. It's one of the most highly aggressive species, or excuse me, genus of African cichlids, and that's Mbuna rock dwellers. They have a tendency to live in the rocks and they are highly aggressive even when they are small. But like for example, that albino there looks similar in shape to some Mbuna, but he's not Mbuna. I had, I've had Mbuna in here. I recently got rid of a couple of mid-sized Mbuna 
because they were just too aggressive. I actually had small ones that could dominate very, very large fish. Subject of aggressive fish, I'm going to touch on another one that's actually sold in a lot of LFS. They, they live well within Buna, but they're actually not in Buna. Um, the Melanochromis, like a Uratus cichlid, very aggressive. They can be very small. They get they can be a, get to be a pretty good size, but even very small. They have a tendency to be very aggressive. So even those, I would stay away from if I could. That's the Melanochromis or Uratus cichlid, which they sell a lot of them in um, local fish stores. Fish I wanted to touch on is a Cyphotilapia. Um, the only Cyphotilapia I have in here is that Frontosa right there. Frontosa, um, some of them can be aggressive, like that one is aggressive toward my tangerine, which I think that tangerine might make its way over to the other tank. Um, but they're not that bad, in all honesty. They can, when they decide they want to fight something like this one, um, seems to be doing, have a tendency to be aggressive, but for the most part, they're usually okay. They're usually pretty slow swimmers. They're docile unless something else bothers them. I think that's a female. Um, it's growing, but mm, Frontosa take a, seem to take a very, very long time to actually grow, to reach maturity. So, but yes, Cyphotilapia, um, that Frontosa is the only one I, I actually have in here. Like I said, they have a tendency to be, they can get very large. Like you can see a Frontosa that's more than 12 inches long and heavy. This one is an Acetotilapia. An example is this zebra obliquitin that I actually have right here. It's the only one I actually have. They, have a ten they can be absolutely gorgeous. This one in here is subdominant, so he has a tendency to just kind of stay um, that color. He sometimes gets a little bit prettier with some oranges and some blacks in them. Talk about this fish here. Um, and they are usually pretty small fish. That's uh, Astato tilapia. That one is a uh, zebra obliquitin. small genus of African cichlids. It's a Neolamprologus. Um, I have a Lulupi, which is part of that genus. You won't be able to see him. He's in these rocks in here somewhere. They're non-aggressive. They will protect themselves. They, they're pretty small. Mine's is yellow. Sometimes it gets dark. They live within the rocks. He will typically come out and he'll typically hold his own. My apologies, but if you watch any of my other videos and you see my Lulu pie in there because I usually do mention him when he's out. Um, he is a Neolamprologus genus. They are obviously rock dwellers. Mine is in the rocks somewhere. I don't actually see him right now at all. The next one is a Cyrocara, which is basically a Cyrocara genus, which is basically the dolphin. It's a blue morii. A lot of times they're misnamed for a hat. Like for example, that's a female dolphin there. And I'll switch over to my 50 gallon to show you a juvenile male. That's a juvenile male of the Cytocaria species, Cytocaria species of blue morii. This is a dolphin, actually what it is. And it's also misnamed for the haplochromus species also. I mean, it, it just happens a lot of times. A lot of people will identify most fish as haps. So typically, if you call an LFS and you ask for haps or peacocks, they'll know what you're talking about, and a lot of them are misnamed. All right, this next fish is of the Champs of Chromis genus. It's a Malawi trout. I'm gonna find mine in here. Some, here he is, somewhere. They're non-aggressive, open water swimmers, um, they get big and you know beautiful colors. Mine's a juvenile. It usually takes a while for them to um, color up. That fish is a little bit over six inches. It still just takes a while for them. So if you decide to invest in a Malawi trout, even that juvenile was pretty pricey when I got them. I've had them for some time now, but um, they're not aggressive. They do very good as a community fish. They are pes pescivores, meaning they do eat fish. In all honesty. But this juvenile is okay. As they get to mature, um, their large gaping mouths with the nickname Malawi Trout, you know, will basically let you know that they could 
devour any fish that could actually fit in their mouth. But they have a tendency to be okay um, in a community tank, especially if you get them as a juvenile, like I did with that one. So that's part of the Champsochromus genus. I don't actually have, well, actually, I, I think this albino right here is from the Labdachromus genus. The reason being, because I had a yellow lab, and he's shaped like it, but I had a yellow lab, that's where the nickname lab comes from, is Labdachromus is what it's actually short for, and they fought all the time. So I'm thinking that that's a male albino version of a yellow lab. He has a tendency to be somewhat aggressive sometimes, but for the most part, he's pretty much okay. From the Placidochromus genus, I have a VC10. A VC10 is actually a Placidochromus malomo. This one, even though they're semi-aggressive, mine has a tendency to be very aggressive. That's the reason why he's um, sheltered off by himself because he does not like my tangerine tiger. Now, that VC10 is a little bit, maybe he's five and a half inches. That tangerine is seven inches and he has a tendency to dominate that tangerine tiger. And so I just think sometimes what happens with African cichlids, if one dominates them, sometimes they fall back in the pecking order and have a tendency to um, not hold their own because even that borley eye is bothering them. And typically that borley eye doesn't bother anyone. Next up is the exochromous anagony. Have one right here. Non-aggressive, mid-water swimmers. That's a beautiful version of a maturing male. Um, he doesn't bother anybody. Nobody bothers him either. He just kind of leaves everyone alone. They leave him alone from the day I put that fish in there. And sometimes with African cichlids, it's relative to their body shape. Um, and so because he's not really shaped like any other fish in here, even though to me, he has kind of the mixed shape of a Nimbrochromus, like a Fusco, um, they don't bother him. He doesn't bother them, you know, at all. So, and he's somewhat shaped like that Malawi trout also. Autopheric terastigma, tetrastigma, right here. Beautiful fish I actually have. I'm somewhat worried about that fish. He's doing better over in this tank, but um, he used to dominate over in the other tank and now he's somewhat shy and doesn't eat as well as I would like him to. You know, he doesn't really get dominated that much by that Red Empress, but there's a version, Autopheryx terastigma. My apologies, he decided he wants to hide right now because I'm over here. So. It's going to be a Navochromus chirogaster. I have a small juvenile male version. He's pretty though. Navochromus chirogaster. That's pretty much what he's going to look like as he gets older. He's just a beautiful specimen of a fish. I've actually had him for probably seven or eight months or so. He recently started to show color, probably about a month or so ago. Um, that's always a welcome sight for people who like to keep males because you kind of never know until they start showing for sure. Other than that, you're really just guessing. Next, the Copatochromus genus, the Borlei. That one happens to be a red fin Borlei, beautiful specimen of fish. They're not that aggressive. They're semi-aggressive. You do see mine chasing from time to time. But for the most part, he gets along pretty good. Nice blue face, nice beautiful orangey red body. Gorgeous fish. A lot of people keep Borlei. Even though I just touted him as semi-aggressive, you notice how and I think it has something to do with the fact that I'm standing here and they think they're going to eat. But that's a Borley eye. Then I have another version of a Borley eye here. Um, not the same species at all, but he is in a Borley eye family. Just a little bit um, more elongated, kind of different shaped than the other Borley eye, but he is a Borley eye. And again, one of the hardest things with African cichlids is the fact that there's so much inbreeding and so much even creation of different species that a lot of times, because there's between 1,600 and 2,200 different species of African cichlid, it's so hard to be specific 
on your fish. So like I have quite a few fish that I'm kind of unsure about. Like that fish who's kind of built like a trophy is a little bit, but he also looks like he may have some labdachromis in him or he may have, you know, in him. I mean, you just really don't know. He's not that aggressive, nice fish, but be hard to really identify. Very, very hard. And then also, you know, with African cichlids, as I mentioned before, dominance plays a huge part. That's a red empress. That's a male red empress. I know for certain that's a male red empress, but you see how he's silver? Absolutely no color in him. That's what the other fish looks like. And it's largely because he's subdominant. So based on, you know, your your husbandry, the hierarchy of the fish in the tank, you're going to have a difference in terms as it relates to how the colors are actually coming out of the fish. But the protomelis species, as I mentioned before, they don't have that much of a tendency to be aggressive. Again, I hope this helps. You know, like I said before, there's between 1,600 and 2,200, depending on where you look up. Um, species of African cichlids. So I just wanted to kind of go over some of the genus because that might help when you're ordering fish and those type of things, but it'll just arm you with more information as we receive it in the cichlid hobby or as we get it. It's actually helpful. And then when you look at some people's African cichlid videos, they'll call them by their scientific names. Now, like I said, there's a lot of overlap in some of the names, even overlap as it relates to the genus some that are actually not haps or hapalochromis genus that are actually called haps like that fish there it's actually nimbochromis but it's called a lot of times a tiger hap which is actually a venustus so again this is Derek king kingfish on youtube i hope this helps always gives me another excuse to show off my guys though so you know nothing ever wrong with that but Derek King, Kingfish on YouTube, as I said before, if you have any suggestions, anything that you think I was wrong about or anything you just wanted to add or correct, please do so in the comment sections. It won't hurt my feelings. All right. Bye-bye.